Thankfully, he didn't succumb to the Upton trait of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> Actually submitted it on time and, uh, and results in this particular uh, acknowledgement tonight. <coughs> the second is to uh, Mark LaRosa, Tom, the Moosehart uh, Alumni Association. Thanks for taking the time of reading a very lengthy package, some might say verbose, and, um, and, and at least coming to the conclusion that the body of work is commensurate with the level of this type of acknowledgement. So, I thank you very much. The Loyal Order of Moose. I could probably talk about thank yous all night and not be done. But there's two things I want to address. One, a sincere thank you for sustaining the Moose Art model that was envisioned by James J. Davis and ensuring that the institution of Moose Art for boys and girls uh, in need, in many cases if not most, right after a, a significant event in a family by losing a parent or both parents. And maintaining that model as a institutional location for boys and girls to be safe and a place for them to emotionally develop. That's very, very important. And that model today has not changed, contrary to what people think, because it's still a child city for children in need. And the fact that you stuck to that particular mission. I think it's very important that we thank the Loyal Order Moose for doing that because there's been a lot of pressure. The second point, I'd like to thank the, uh, the Moose and the way they structured Moose Hunt. I'm going to mirror a lot of things that Eric uh, talked about and that the structure of Moose Hunt basically retained or gave certain components to us. Parenting. We observed parenting in multiple layers, most positive, some not so positive. But the aspect that I think was unique and a godsend was it was an adjunct to the um, most cases mothers of uh, surviving spouses that were at Musar. So that blend and keeping that continuity uh, is significant over my 10 years of being at Musar. Structure. We all know now as parents um, and other administrators and so forth how important structure is. We knew at Moosehart 6.30, if you didn't get up, you're going to be behind the power curve. If you didn't get down by 9 o'clock, the next day is going to be pretty uh, loaded up because of what you didn't do. We knew that we had to get things done between 6.30 and 9. That structure as it I experienced later on in life uh, kept me on the straight and narrow in terms of achievement. Socialization. When I joined the military, I thought I was a first day person. But I was a 10 year veteran. Because there's nothing in the military that they ever proposed, suggested, or tried to do that we didn't do at Musa. So being raised and uh, brought up and, and living in close quarters with 12 to 15. Um, family members and extended family. For 10 years, I was a professional in terms of the socialization piece of what to do and how to react to it, or in some cases, not react to it. Education. Because I chose um, the military and aviation, especially in the, in the fighter side, I competed with Air Force Academy graduates, service school graduates, Stanford, Duke, Citadel. These are quality, quality institutions. Never once did I feel I had to take a second seat on education. I competed straight up, and I certainly wasn't the smartest, uh, uh, brightest ball in our class, but did it go as deep as it should in certain areas? No. But you can't go deep and wide uh, as a rule. And uh, I was, we were served as a class, as a family, with an education that was first class at the liberal arts level, and it certainly uh, was adequate for, my, for myself. Vocational. The vocational um, security that I always knew 
and the whole family do at 67, and you know, that if what we tried was challenging and we stumbled, we could always go back to our vocation. And we could always do a uh, quality um, a livelihood by being, in my case, a barber. Um, that is, those, is equal to me as if I had parents that were multi-millionaires. Because they weren't going to bail me out in funding because that didn't exist, but I could bail myself out in terms of having a skill set. Which is obviously core to uh, James A. Davis as a uh, philosopher and so forth. And then athletics. Um, we thought from 7th to 10th or 11th grade, the whole purpose of athletics was sports. Um, we found out later from, say, uh, 11th to 12th, it was also to keep your mind off the girls. And, uh, and it worked fast for uh, And we would do that 12 months, and the truth of the matter is, we didn't know when the sports changed. It's when the coach threw in a different shaped ball. You know, you don't, you don't dribble a football, you don't uh, drop kick a basketball. So we sort of knew the sports changed, but we never stopped. We were just sort of, sort of going on. So if you take all that together, and this, uh, this is uh, for the uh, oil or this. If you put all that together and mixed it up, put it in the blender and poured it out, it would be the appreciation for the respect of accountability. And if there's one lesson that I learned that has helped me to this day and will help me in the future, because the clock is still ticking, is uh, the respect for accountability. And Musar, if you're supposed to do it, you did it. And you didn't do it, you're accountable. If you weren't supposed to do it, and you did do it, which in my class I'm known for at least one thing. <laughs> you, you are accountable. And as we all know in today's generation, um, that's kind of a lesson that uh, in the victimhood is kind of, kind of lost. I was proud to take accountability for things that I did not do properly. And so was the Moose Heart family at 67. Faculty, coaches, and staff. Can't say enough about them. They coached us, they educated us, they mentored us, and they were the role models that we basically replicated our lives on. When you have a group of people that the majority is lacking in a father figure, um, some obviously a mother or both parents, the need for a role model uh, is essential. And uh, what I did is I cope in the following way. I uh, have a three-part, not a replacement, you don't replace a parent, but a substitution for the uh, loss of our father in three parts. One was my mother. She's well known to senior girls in particular about 67 because she was the house mother of New York Hall. Uh, so they will vouch for what I'm about to say. And even though she was a loving, nurturing mother of nine kids, seven boys, two girls, she had a bucket of testosterone. And she, could, she could reach down and she would sprinkle daddy dust uh, in a very assertive way. She had a tendency to stamp her foot with that arth arthritic finger, point at the uh, little Billy boy, and kind of tell me how I should probably clean up my act. That was a role that uh, represented a third of my male role model. The other is the Chicago Cubs. I do not think, I don't know how many times I've run over to see my mother at 4.30 and in her home, and all the girls are, not our class, of course, 62 class, 63, watching Bandstand. The good news is I was over at that time and turning on watching the last inning and a half of the Chicago Cubs with Jack Brickham. But three of those, and the validation is that this was the Cubs game yesterday. Because when I go to the Cubs game, it was part of my homecoming. Because it was a big part of my life. And you see Ernie Banks, Billy Williams, Ron Sandel, numbers flying in the wind. So everything I've ever done in my life is to try to do it with the enthusiasm of Ernie Banks, the class of Billy Williams, and my favorite, the effort of Ron Sandel. 
because she talked about a tax to go and she was, he was slow. He was quiet and paunchy at the waist. And uh, he, uh, it turns out later, he was diabetic. But those three, I don't know how you could blend together a uh, third of your role model people. And of course, the last is um, the coaches. And for our class, I would just like to mention three by name because they had such a significant uh, role in our lives, and that's Coach Harold Anderson. Even though he wasn't at Moose Start that long, I think seven years, but for our class, he covered everything. As a teacher and as a coach, um, he affected us. Johnny Williams was a legend, but we weren't really affected by him. Harold Anderson, in our lives, was the Johnny Williams. And, he did a great job. and then for the girls, Coach Goldstein. I was telling her the other night, she was a mystery to the boys because all she did was she take all the girls and put them in that little one piece boomer bottom, <laughs> go behind the gym and do something, and, um, and then come back. They weren't sweaty. <laughs> but uh, I think it was a meditation. But talking to the, you know, the ladies of our class, she was a very, very formative um, person. And then the one that, uh, they're not, quite frankly, I'm not advocating this, but I certainly would vote for it. There ought to be a statue of Gus Tyner. Yeah. Uh, graduated from North Central. Comes in here, and he was influenced. I forget the name, but it's a Hall of Fame uh, inductee from the North Central. He's a matter of fact, he got a statue of graduate from North Central. He influenced him enough to come to um, Moosard. Oh, Billy Jump. I thought my name was Oh, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Gus and I were really buds, because uh, I wasn't known for a long distance uh, runner. And after Ballinger and so forth, that's sort of what we were going to get. <coughs> very, very um, influential in my life in the class of 67. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge those three because they were very, very defensive. I'm almost done here. <coughs> <coughs> the class of 67, um, we're a family. And I'd just like to, and again, uh, parallel a lot with the Eric has said. And uh, we were a relatively small class, uh, actually large compared to today, but we were 44. Nominally 50-50 on the male and female split, depending on who's coming and who's going. We uh, had every component in an extended family that you need. We had the academic leadership, the brain of John Small and uh, Betsy slash Smiley Beard. And we didn't know it at the time, but they were so focused and committed that they intellectually raised all of our academic votes. Enough so that in our class we have 16 college graduates out of 44. Uh, I'm going to repeat what Eric said before because I think it's important that in the 1967 is known as the summer of love. <laughs> so we made our own love today. <laughs> having three marriages, uh, Musar marriages, both of them approaching their 50 year and first. So I don't know if it's a novelty of the marriage, or the fact that they made it for 50 years, but it's stunning, and that's obviously uh, Eric and Maurice, Dan and Patty, and Tom and Joanne. So we made our contribution in that area. All right. We had 10 brothers that served in the military. At the height of the Vietnam War, all the way through Desert Storm, we were fortunate that none were killed. But several have Purple Hearts. And there's one I'd like to kind of highlight tonight. Um, he's not. When I say he's not with us, he's physically not with us here at this table, but he lives in the table. And that's John Carr. John Carr came back um, wounded. I'll come back to that. 
Okay, I'm over that. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay. Yogi, Yogi, Yogi. <laughs> <clears throat> so, what I would like to say on the class of 67 that all of our achievements, each one of our successes by everybody, is shared by all of us. And there are seven boys that are not with us tonight that did pass. And I would like to have an audible recognition because I'd like to mention the names. Richard Bublé. Goofy Chartier. <laughs> Jim and Jerry Dance. Gordon Brinkman. John Hoskins. By memory. Uh, Larry Bishop. Now, actually speaking, we know that that list is going to increase. Not exponentially, hopefully, but at a steep slope in the next coming years. So I'd like to close with the fact that when the last one says goodbye and turns out the lights, that we um, can rest assured as a past the 67. That we made a prideful and honorable contribution to the Moose Heart Alumni legacy. And that we know that we influence others like ourselves as we were informed by being effective teachers, mentors, and role models. That's it. Now, what I'd like to do is back up and mention about John Tark. 90% disabled. This is a Moose Heart grad our classmate. He didn't sit back. He came back and became a driver to take patience for the Veterans Assistance Committee or Commission. And he rose from that over almost a 40-year career to become the first Vietnam veteran nominee as the supervisor of the commission. And he served in that role for about 35 years. But if you go up to Geneva, and you're driving from Batavia to Geneva, and you look on the left, there's a train station, and you look on the right, there's the King <coughs> County uh, Government Center, yes. and then there's this gorgeous Veteran Memorial statue. It has the names of every King County resident that paid the ultimate price as a veteran from the Spanish who does not storm. And obviously, Bobby Harriet and Timmy Gilson are on there. That was John Carr's concept. That was his commitment. That was his project. And he got it done over 10 years. And it was basically uh, dedicated in 2004. And I think he would be an excellent consideration for distinguished graduate alumni in the future. Because that is truly a lasting legacy for the community, for the county, and for most time. Now, Yogi. <laughs> Yogi, oh, again, I wish it was a manly thing. <laughs> Bob's exactly right. If you, uh, if you dropped a, if you did something negative, we were quick to kind of put a handle on you, and you could not change it. So when I went to Korea, I was a sizable girth um, for my, for my peer group, <laughs> and uh, I was the deputy op op uh, operations officer. The operations officer was relatively small. <laughs> so they thought it would be clever <laughs> to call me a yogi. A boop boop. <laughs> and, uh, so rest assured, your frontline operational people sitting on pretty significant weapons address their senior leadership as Yogi and Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs>
when he told me the alternate choice was Jabba the Hutt, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not so sure that Yogi's not a bad man. <laughs> so I have thought of that for the rest of my life. And when I flew jets over there in the UAE for probably six years, there's not a, a UAE in the I went to find you, that's that 16, manufactured by Lockheed out for work. Save, save the old um, manufacturing line. Um, nobody knows my name other than Yogi. So he said, you know Bill Upton? No, no, Yogi? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it. I'm sorry for the, the length of it. But uh, after 50 years, I think it was time, probably, probably well over time, to express uh, appreciation on behalf of Class of 67 and my style about how we felt about those particular areas, in particular uh, uh, the uh, Royal Order of Moose and the uh, faculty staff and coaches of Moose Okay, that's it. Go Congratulations to David and to uh, Phil. Uh, I think we're going to turn it over the evening to our DJ and uh, see if you folks can tear this floor up a little bit. So, uh, thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.